Hi, I'm Wendell Steinhauer, president of the New Jersey Education Association. NJEA is committed to celebrating excellence in education. That's why we're proud to support Teacher Appreciation Week, a special series produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating New Jersey's talented and dedicated teachers. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities, Virtua, MagnaCare, and by Cone Resnick, Accounting Tax and Advisory, where forward thinking creates results. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Alex Ishkanian is a playwright librarian Bryan Elementary School in Teaneck, New Jersey. Good to see you. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, this is part of our series we do in cooperation with the NJEA, this classroom close-up. Uh, Helping Drew is a puppet show that you introduced, right? Exactly. Um, I worked on it as the playwright and also composed the music and the lyrics and um, partnered up with a puppeteer. Yep. Uh, David Manley and uh, it's been... You want to see the video? Touring. Yeah. Let's excellent. see the video then we'll talk. Excellent. It's called Helping Drew, anti-bullying for kindergarten, pre-K, up to fifth grade. Great stuff. Let's take a look. Classroom close-up. Used to think I'd have a friend. Now that thought is at an end. Is it true what they say? Maybe I'm not okay because I'm Drew. Just Drew. Puppets are amazing. Something magical happens when the kids see the puppets. They really instantly give their heart over to the puppets. And the social issues combined with the puppets are a powerful meaning because the kids are interested in social issues. They do care about how to be a good friend. They do care about protecting themselves. And when you have a puppet experiencing one of those scenarios, they really want to get involved and, and help out. Students at Bryan Elementary School in Teaneck are learning about kindness and respect, thanks in part to a musical puppet show called Helping Drew, which was written by the school's librarian, Alex Ishkanian. I've always had a passion for teaching, and I've also had a passion for performing and writing, and I sort of wanted to combine the two. I'm a kid protector, and I'll keep in touch. But with only two eyes, I might miss much. Uh, originally, it actually started as a one-man show where I was performing each one of the characters. And I was lucky enough to run into David Manley of Up in Arms, who uh, is this wonderful puppeteer who uh, was interested in taking the project and making a puppet show. Hey, loser, have you seen Victoria? No. Well, that's good for her. <laughs> I'm sure she, you wouldn't want to see your face. <laughs> Why are you so mean to me? Drew is a student at Puppet Public Elementary School, and he is having a bullying uh, issue with another student, Lee. There's another character, Victoria, who really feels very uncomfortable about going along with Lee, but just doesn't know what to do, just can't find the words or the courage to speak up to Lee and say, you know, we shouldn't be doing this to a classmate. Now that's funny, right? No! But isn't it funny when it's a girl and she's not acting like you think a girl should? No! Sorry, Drew, I apologize, it's true. Now there's so much more and more I see. The story concludes with Drew and Victoria standing up to Lee and Lee reforming his ways, which Ishkanian hopes sends a positive message about change. Kids can change, there's possibilities. We don't want to label, even though we do have that word bully, we want the kids to see that they're not in boxes. So my hope is that we have compassion for all of the people involved in a bullying situation and that we see that there's hope for each one of them and that we don't give up on, on any of them. 
That is so good. How proud are you? Thank you. you. I'm very proud. Um, and I'm proud of the kids that see the show because they, they get it, you know. Um, they, they get it. And to hear them, you know, as you could see in the video, the response mm. um, of saying, no, you know, we're not going to allow that. And um, even the kids, I suppose, that may have bad habits, when they come collectively as a group and see something like that, I think, well, I hope they reflect and, and see that they can do things differently. You know, helping Jew, it's interesting. And we have three young children, and, and I have an older boy who's 21, turning 22 as we do this show. And I know they have all faced bullying. I pray that, I hope and pray they, they have not bullied mm -hmm. others. I can't be sure. But I always wonder, like, what do they do when they're in that situation? You know, when as parents we struggle, we, we really worry. And we and you look at a video like this, kids need help, don't they? They need to have some direction. Absolutely. Why did you know that? Well, I think uh, as a kid, um, I was... Were you bullied? I was bullied. And, you know, not all the time, but at times. Times. It doesn't take much to stay and with you, right? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. And I was, I, the, I was the crier. I think Drew is based uh, partly on what I used to do. I don't think I was crying. I think there was an element of, well, they're going to stop. They're going to see how upset I am. But also it was sincere crying as well. Yeah. I wasn't the kid that would necessarily punch back or, you know, say something really mean back. So, um, you know, I think I could have used a little more sticking up for myself, you know. Or and, someone and else helping to... you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And there were people that did that, too. So, And there were times where I didn't treat people so well, either. And, I, you know, I feel badly about that. So if this show can help, um, you know, it's not the answer. One show is not the answer, but it could be part of a program. It triggers a conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you get from the kids afterwards? Oh, gosh. Does well, some of them come up to you and talk to you? Oh, absolutely. And say it's happening to me? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think if you begin that conversation, um, you know, um, they do. They do uh, tell stories about themselves. And um, it's amazing if you just ask kids as young as pre-K and K, they can talk about things that maybe you think you might not ordinarily talk to them about. But if, it, if it's worded on their level, um, they want to share. Our daughter Olivia is three and a half, and she told me the other day about a kid who was mean to her. She didn't use the word bully. Right. Anymore. She said, so and so was mean to me. I said, right. why do you think? She said, I don't know. I didn't do anything. And I said, how'd you feel? And she said, I felt terrible. I exactly. said, would you do that to someone else? She said, no. Now, again, I'm not sure, but it starts at a ridiculously young age. It does. Our kids need yeah, help. It can. That's why. That's why the idea, by the way, log on, get more information. Helping Jew is such a good name for this. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting uh, about the show is that actually the audience ends up helping Victoria, who's that in between. Like, yeah. I don't think this helping is right. Victoria. But you're my, you're such a good friend. So, and then they're helping Lee to find other ways to channel his energy. Um, in this case, he's really not mean-spirited. He's more like, isn't this funny? Look at me, you know. But so. then he finds out he's hurting someone. Right. And he finds out it's really not funny. And that brings up the question of really what is funny. And uh, even society needs to take a look yeah. at what we laugh at because, you know. You love your teaching? I do. I love the kids. I went away from it for a while and yeah, then I heard concentrated really on the you arts. Back. Huh? I heard this really brought you back. <laughs> oh, definitely. In a big way. Definitely. Definitely. Re-energized you? Definitely. Um, and I get to work at the school that I work at. It's pre-K and K, so that energy is, um, is so alive there. Um, and um, when we brought the show to the school that I work in, Teaneck, um, there was an excitement. They knew I had written it, and uh, it, was big. it was a really nice. Well, nice you're doing event. great stuff, and you make your profession uh, proud, and uh, you're just one of the long line of terrific public school teachers who have joined us in this series. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Good stuff. Stay there. One on one will continue right after this. That was great. Maud Dami is the former president of the New Jersey State Board of Education. He's also an old friend 
We knew each other in a different life. That's right. <laughs> Back in the 1980s, I was honored That's to right. be a member of the state legislature, and right. you were uh, with the NJA. Um, excuse me, you were no, part of with, the I was Board of Education. On the State Board of Education. Board of Education, yeah. and we were talking about education issues, and we are doing this in cooperation with our partners with the NJA uh, Classroom Close-Up. You're about to see a, a video of, of the work that Maud is involved in. You're also a Holocaust survivor, which is yes. the connection right. to this piece. And, and Maud and I, while we knew each other for a long time, I actually never knew this part of your story as a Holocaust survivor. Um, set this up real quick for us, what we're about to see. This video, that the classroom close-up video, talks about the work that you're doing in educating people. No, it, it's about a trip that I take every year that I lead. Is this uh, to Berlin and Prague? Yes, and we go on. But NJEA classroom close-up joined us for five days and filmed the Berlin and the Prague part of this journey that we take every year with teachers. So you're partnering with the NJEA. To to do this. They came to show this story. You're yeah. out there trying to educate people on the Holocaust, so right. we never forget. Mm -hmm. uh, Maud right. Dami is an extraordinary uh, person, born in the Netherlands, um, and was one of the Dutch, Dutch hidden children who survived the Holocaust. She came to the United States at the age of 14, and she's been a giant in the field of education for many years, but you'll see why she's a giant here from our partners, the NJA, looking at classroom close-up right now. I think it, it'll be a wonderful experience. I know we don't all know each other. It's just amazing every year to see these groups just bond. Maud Dame recently invited this group of New Jersey educators to her home. She's preparing them for a seminar where they'll visit several Holocaust sites throughout Europe. I can see the impact it has on teachers. Maud has hosted this trip for over 10 years. Teachers teach it. They read up about it, they've seen films, they've had survivors in their classroom, but they have never actually been there to walk and smell and feel these camps. One hundred twenty were here in this cell, and this cell was Jewish cell, so were only the Jewish prisoners here. We can imagine they had numbers. Because this was also, they went out and worked, a labor camp. And also, it really was a transit camp. You came in, and you were shipped out. This trip provides educators with an unforgettable experience. And for Maud, it's also a personal one. She's a Holocaust survivor. It took me a long time to come to terms and be able to talk about it. And most of my family perished in Poland. So then I started speaking about it. And then I realized how important it is to share as a survivor my story with students. Maud and her younger sister were born in Holland, but at age six, her parents, with the help of the Dutch underground, sent both girls to live with a Christian family in a safe house. After the war, they were reunited with their parents, and by 1950, the family moved to New York City. Maud's story is chronicled in the 2006 PBS documentary, The Hidden Child. There were so many Jews hidden, adults as well as children. So that whole Maud has been featured numerous times on Classroom Close-Up so and really continues to visit classrooms to, to share her story. And they felt at the risk of their own lives, they would save us. Although she's not a teacher, Maud was a longtime member of the New Jersey State Board of Education and has always been an avid supporter of Holocaust education. I think then the teacher going back to the classroom, it's, it's just amazing from what I hear from them, how that has impacted them and how that has helped them in really understanding it much, much more. And of course, teaching to their students. They're the ones who really benefit from it too. It's overwhelming. You, know, you, you come in with a certain idea, um, you read about things, you see pictures, but when you get here and you see it firsthand, it becomes real. And that's what I want to take back to the classroom as well, is to hopefully make it more real for my students. What will become of all the memories? Are they to scatter with the dust and the breeze? But one thought gives me comfort. It's all I have left. I know that God and the children, they won't forget. We won't forget. Please don't forget. What are you thinking, Maud? 
<laughs> takes me back to this trip just um, this summer. And um, it's, it's difficult even for me, even though I am in Poland two or three times a year going to the camps. But each time, it's not anything that one can get used to. But it was just wonderful to see um, the group to be able to see and to feel uh, the camps. And I think everyone, we really don't know each other. This year there were 32 teachers, but we bond and we're family when we come back. And we have shared so many memories. We have laughed, we have cried. And everyone is a changed person once they come back after having done this journey. How are they better teachers? Because I think they understand it. I mean, most teachers will have films and they have survivors in their classroom and all that, but to actually be there and to touch it and to, to feel it and to smell it, I think makes such an impression on them that they never forget. And I think, and then they're able to go into the classroom and really share this experience with their students. What do you think it's done for those children? Um, it's amazing because um, I got many letters after I speak from students. I'm sure. And I can tell by the letters they write that I've reached them. So it's, it's, so it's sometimes it's a little comical too because um, one particular teacher actually had a plan on the first paragraph thanking me, second paragraph what they learned from me, and third paragraph how they're going to use this knowledge. And it was very moving to see in how many ways they would use this knowledge. And then also, of course, one little boy wrote, now I'm, I don't like my brother, but I'm going to be very nice to him <laughs> from now on. So <laughs> you have those two. You know, I can't imagine what it must be like for you on two levels. One, as you talk about what you, what the experience is like going back, that's none of us can imagine that. But the other thing is having the impact that you've had. I mean, some of us can just, imagine having one-tenth of that impact. What is that like for you to know that you're having this impact? It, it, you know, it took me a long time to talk about it. I learned to speak English very well. No one would assume that I was foreign born. But in 1982, um, when Governor King created the Advisory Council on Holocaust, I decided the time had come I had to speak about it. It was very difficult at first. But it now um, it has helped me to come to terms with many things that I've experienced. But it also um, has made me such a better person and I feel so much more and how wonderful it is to be alive, I think is the most important thing. It doesn't matter what you have, but just to be alive. And I've learned a lot about myself too in the process, never thinking I would ever be on this journey, but I am and I feel that um, Everyone who hears our stories of the survivors benefits. Well, you know, it's one thing to know you back in the day in the legislature mm -hmm. while you're lobbying for certain issues and talking about education, but it's a very different thing to see you now and to know the impact you're having on teachers and children. And now, everyone watching on public television, we thank our partners at the NJEA and this great series, Classroom Close-Up. You are an extraordinary woman who is making a huge difference, and you honor us by being with us. Thank you, Maud. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, a, one of the great teachers in the state of New Jersey. He is Al Mugno, honors engineering design teacher at Northern Highlands Regional High School. This is part of our classroom close-up series we do in cooperation with our friends at the New Jersey Education Association. You're about to see a video clip of Al. Uh, this whole cardboard regatta thing you guys do, I'm not even going to describe it. But this is part of the classroom close-up series we're doing, uh, which features great teachers doing great things. Cardboard regatta, great stuff. See the video? Then we'll talk about it. Let's go to the video. I will be on the floating dock with my bullhorn with Mr. Trotter and with the air horn. We're running it in four consecutive heats and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Okay. The object of the cardboard regatta is to design, 
and construct uh, a boat out of cardboard. The object is not only to get across the lake, but to get across the lake in the fastest time. No boat can be longer than seven feet in length. It has to fit through the doorway, and no walls or hulls can be greater than an inch thick. Yeah! Our time is a minute and eight seconds. As we were going across, we were thinking, just don't tip. Yeah, don't <laughs> fall into the water. <laughs> this is the honors engineering design class. They spent a lot of time, a lot of time researching, a lot of time designing, and a lot of time building. They're already sinking over there. <laughs> oh! The winner of Group C. They have different grades with this. They have their design grades with their CAD drawings. They have their grades of the prototypes, how they perform. They get off the starting line. They get a certain amount of points. The requirement is for them to finish. They finish, they get 100 uh, on that requirement. And then there is a scale where they finish. And that's all done by time. The most important thing we had to keep in mind was buoyancy and balance. <laughs> Mr. Mogno went over Archimedes' principle of buoyancy, and we had to incorporate that into our design as part of our final exam. So it's basically the culmination of everything we learned this year between structural design, uh, supports, balance, everything. To our winners this year for the fastest time of one minute and eight seconds, to the Italian Stallion boat by Martha. And Mr. Mugno really is like the power behind all like the design process, behind comprehending everything we need to do to like design our boats and build the boats. And he really, he really sets us up for success. He really allows us to build something that's successful, fast, and really something we want to, we're proud of. To see them laughing, having fun, joking, rooting each other on uh, is, is a great feeling for a teacher. It, it's the epitome of what teaching is. It's something that, as I will, uh, they will remember for the rest of their lives. How much do you love what you do? Oh, I, I am very passionate for... Uh, You're watching that video, what are you feeling? For teaching, oh, it's... Well, well, why am I looking at your eyes and I'm <laughs> seeing some mist in your eyes right now? It's just, it's, it, it, it brings tremendous feelings to seeing uh, the magnitude of these projects come to fruition and to see the students enjoying themselves and, and really embracing the, the moment and the project itself. What are they learning? They, they, are they what, learning science? Well, they learn science, uh, they learn math, they learn problem solving, they learn engineering, they learn teamwork. Is it, is it the, the thing called STEM? Yes. Science, technology, engineering, and? And math. They're learning, learning STEM with this regatta? Yes. Doesn't get any better than this, right, Steve? <laughs> and, and where did you come up with this idea? OK, that's a great question. I went to an uh, NJTEEA workshop. Oh, yeah, of course. Rolls right off the tongue. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it has something to do with engineering. I know that. Yes. It was a workshop out in Morristown High School in 2010. And I have to give credit to Jack Rizzo. He came up with an idea for this with his students. I came back to school. I met with my supervisor at the time, Steve Simonetti, and I said to him, I would love to do this in 2011, the next school year. And I took his document, and then I went much deeper, much greater in depth, um, and really tweaked it up and made it more tailored to my honors engineering design student class. Some of these students, will some of them potentially move into feels like science, technology, math because of this? Absolutely, 100%. Almost all of the students you saw in the video, this was done in 2013. Uh, Most of them graduated on, some graduated 2013, some graduated this past year. Almost all of them are in the engineering field, going from mechanical, civil, environmental, um, biomechanical, mm. bioengineering, um, biophysics. So they're all within the science and engineering field. When did you know you wanted to teach? When I was in high school, I come from a long bloodline of teachers in my family. My aunts, my uh, uncle was an engineer, my father was an educator, my mother was an educator. So uh, in high school, I started tutoring with the National Honor Society. 
when I was a junior. Uh, and that's when I knew that this was something I wanted to get into. How do you keep the passion? That's a good question. Every year you try and look. 22 years for you. Yes. 22 years. Yes. Go ahead. You, you, you try and look, and my personal um, philosophy is try and make things better. Try and look to tweak things, try and come up with new ideas, look to see what's out there in the world today, see if we can bring that into the classroom. And it makes it exciting. And you keep an open mind about things. Um, and it works. I mean, it, re it really does work. For those who think they know what teaching is all about, you guys, you get the good deal, right? You get the summers and vacation. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what, do you, yes, okay, yeah. what do you say? Um, do they have any idea what it takes? No. no. You, you're on stage, you know, <laughs> five hours a day. I mean, you, you're on stage with me now. Oh, no, your job's <clears> harder. Trust <throat> me. Go ahead. But, you know, you're on stage to teenagers. It, listen. Keeping their attention. <laughs> yeah, right. Keeping their attention, keeping them focused, right. keeping them energized. Engaged. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a lot. It takes a lot. But I'm very fortunate because the students I have, I'm an elective, so the students I have want to be there. And they, they really embrace it. And I tell them, every, at the end of every school year, I said, you know, thank you for being part of, of this course, and I hope you enjoyed the show. What do you say, finally, to all of your colleagues in the education profession right now as part of this series in which we celebrate? educational excellence with our colleagues at the NJA with Classroom Close-Up. What do you say to your colleagues? Uh, to Mike, listen, it's, it's something that can be done. It's something that's, that's there. It's something that, um, you know, if you keep an open mind about things, it, it'll, it can happen. And if you give the students a chance, um, you'll be surprised. And I was very surprised the first time we did this in 2011. Um, but They'll embrace it, and, and, and students like to have freedom mm. to be creative. It's no secret that in 2012, you were named uh, New Jersey State Engineering and Technology Teacher of the Year. Congratulations for that, but also more importantly, congratulations for everything you do for the uh, students that you have every year and the degree to which you engage them and inspire them. And um, we're proud to have you with us. And on behalf of all of us who have our kids in public schools, thanks for everything you do. Thank Keep you very up. much. Okay. Pleasure being on the show. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, NJIT, PSENG, Virtua, MagnaCare, and by Cone Resnick. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by Politicker NJ. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.